My name is Eric Weinhandel. I'm the Director of Home Dialysis Research at the Hennepin Healthcare Research Institute in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And I'm uh, Preyas Taylor. I'm a clinical nephrologist in Delaware. I've been in practice 16 years and um, I am the medical director for Delaware's first uh, standalone home dialysis unit and one of my interests is the transition of patients from chronic kidney disease to end-stage renal disease and the therapies that are offered. So, um, let's start with a little bit of background. Um, tell me a little bit about your experience with both of the home therapies, um, but in particular home hemodialysis. So, um, I started practice in 2005 after uh, graduating from a fellowship program. Um, I had the unique experience of um, having a lot of exposure to peritoneal dialysis during my training, um, which was kind of an oddity at that time. Um, so when I joined practice, I was definitely interested in offering that modality to my patients because I just saw how well people did with it and I saw how um, good their lives were. So uh, the home hemodialysis machine that most people use these days was just coming out then. You know, we needed to offer more than one modality for home patients because you know, we all see patients who have been on peritoneal dialysis for a while and as they lose residual kidney function, they, it just tends to occupy more and more of their lives. And, and so we needed a different option to keep people at home. Do you remember what the patient responses were to the first few patients that you had prescribed home hemodialysis to? The first few people that I prescribed, um, it, there was hesitation initially, obviously, when we were talking about it. Um, once they got going, they felt great on it. And most of these patients actually came from uh, starting at an in-center unit. Okay. Um, so uh, some of them were crash starts, um, but um, it was only later on that we had some patients convert from peritoneal dialysis to home hemodialysis. But I would tell you that um, the patients we started initially uh, did have the experience of in-center hemodialysis first. And then when they came over to home hemodialysis, they just said, I feel so much better. I'm not tired. I can go about my day after my treatment. Is there a clinical case to be made for home hemodialysis? I mean, as you as a prescribing nephrologist, do you think, you know, this patient has particular indications, this is going to be a great reason to prescribe, say, more frequent therapy or nocturnal therapy? Um, or is it just only about lifestyle considerations? You know, I think there's definitely a case to be made from the clinical perspective. I mean, we know from the FHN trials um, that more frequent uh, dialysis has its benefits with respect to left ventricular hypertrophy and volume management. Um, and, you know, after being on peritoneal dialysis for many years or even having long-standing chronic kidney disease uh, and hypertension, we're going to see these anatomical changes within the, um, uh, the myocardium. And uh, that in and of itself is going to be a risk factor uh, for mortality. And the home hemodialysis allows the frequency of treatments that will help that regress. And hopefully, um, and, we, and we know that the outcomes are improved for those patients. And uh, this is a modality that uh, they can continue on uh, until they get a transplant. Or if they're not a transplant candidate, it's, it's a modality that they can continue on for the rest of their lives. Do you think that uh, on a population level, do you think that we would be well served by, say, you know, focusing uh, some of our home hemodialysis enthusiasm on in-center patients who have recurrent volume and heart failure problems? Oh, without a doubt. Okay. I mean, I've seen that improve. You know, we've taken patients from the in-center arena who have been hospitalized with congestive heart failure multiple times, and finally, you know, we kind of have the conversation like, hey, you know, we think that one way that you can um, stay out of the hospital and um, be, have improved functionality at home or not become short of breath as much is um, doing more frequent dialysis. Obviously, you know, you have to continue um, emphasizing sodium uh, restriction and fluid restriction but, um, and the, the medications that go along with treating heart failure. But, um, we have, we have uh, brought some people from the in-center arena into the home dialysis arena, and they've done much better. To what extent, when you're evaluating home dialysis interest or candidacy, whatever you want to call it, to what extent does the behavior of a patient in-center predict how they'll be at home? <laughs> uh, that's a good question. I don't know if it's ever been studied. I, anecdotally, I will tell you, I don't think it predicts <laughs> much at all. You know, I've seen patients who you know, go from the in-center arena and, and, and most of them, you know, once they, if they're motivated to make that switch, 
they're motivated to do well. I, I don't think anyone kind of comes into healthcare wanting to do poorly. Sure. I think the challenge is finding out why it is that they're doing poorly, you know. And if we can kind of step back and ask the questions that we need to ask of the patient as to why a particular therapy is not working for them or what is it about it that's challenging, then we can find a better option for them. So I want to touch uh, on the issue of supposed contraindications to home hemodialysis. And one of them that I often hear cited is a catheter patient. Um, now you mentioned infection control in the context of catheters, but let's say that you've got a patient who's got relatively advanced peripheral disease. It's highly unlikely the fistula is gonna be able to be created and maintained. Um, what's your feeling and experience about that? You know, when I first started um, prescribing home hemodialysis and, and when we started our program, um, we kind of agreed that, you know, a patient could start training with uh, a catheter, um, but they had to have a plan to get a fistula created in, within three months. And um, over time in general, that, that, that's pretty much held up because that's the route that most patients will follow. But I will tell you that I've had um, a patient who uh, is horribly afraid of needles, um, does not ever want to have a fistula created, and in fact um, was an in-center patient. Uh, he was my in-center patient, and um, he had a catheter. And every, you know, it was probably about three times a year we'd get a line-related bacteremia, and the catheter would have to be removed and ultimately replaced, and then we'd go through the whole rigmarole again. He was not the most compliant patient. Um, with respect to in-center hemodialysis, and um, and one of my partners suggested that uh, you know why don't we try doing home hemodialysis? Lo and behold, we're you know kind of three years out. His infection rates have almost gone to nil. His blood pressure is under better control. His phosphorus is under good control. He's feeling better, you know, after treatments. So now I'm stuck with the question. Here's a patient who's doing much better on home hemodialysis than he was doing on in-center hemodialysis. And do I take that away from him just for the fact that he has a catheter? And I think I'm of the mindset now that the answer is no. I don't think a catheter is a contraindication to um, doing long-term home hemodialysis. AdvancingDialysis.org is dedicated to providing clinicians and patients with better access to and more awareness of the reported clinical benefits and improved quality of life made possible with home dialysis, including more frequent, more intensive, and nocturnal therapy schedules. All forms of hemodialysis, including treatments performed in-center and at home, involve some risks. In addition, there are certain risks unique to treatment in the home environment. Patients differ, and not everyone will experience the reported benefits of more frequent hemodialysis. Certain risks associated with hemodialysis treatment are increased when performing nocturnal therapy due to the length of treatment time and because therapy is performed while the patient and care partner are sleeping. AdvancingDialysis.org is a project of Next Stage Medical Incorporated.